guys, welcome back to another video in our Unify build series. Uh, last time we went through on how to join a Ubiquiti USG, that's their Unify router, to a cloud controller. And then we configured our network so that whenever we plug in other Unify devices, it automatically points to our controller where we can adopt that device into our network and automatically deploy our network settings. This time we're going to take it a little step up and this is going to be, I think, a quite fun video. Um, we're going to get into creating two networks. So we're going to have a virtual network running that's dedicated for guest access only. And in this guest network, they are not going to be able to access our private network or other guests within the guest network. And then to top things off, we're also going to throttle down that guest network so that we're not blowing our bandwidth for guests that are just wanting to stream Netflix or YouTube or anything like that. Uh, we'll make sure that the resources are staying dedicated for our mission critical devices. So with that in mind, let's jump over to our cloud controller and see on how we can configure this. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is open up our settings on our cloud controller and I'm going to go straight to networks. And this is the first network that we created. Let's give this a new name. I'm just gonna call this office and save that so that we know exactly which network's which. This network is going to be like our private network where we're going to put most of our mission critical devices. So the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is create a new network and let's just call this guest. And obviously the purpose of this is going to be guest as well. The VLAN of this, this is where we're going to actually create the ID of how to identify network traffic between the same switch. So if we plug in a device, it's going to go right to our private network. But if somebody joins over this guest network, any packet that's sent over the network will be tagged with this VLAN ID. So I'm just going to pick a number 20 for this right now. And then let's set a actual gateway IP for this as well. So our router for the local network will have to have an IP for our private network and also our guest network so that our guests can get access to the internet. Picking the IP address on this is important. So if I go with a 192.168.50.1 slash 24, you can see right here the network count, network IP count is only 254. And for the size of this establishment, we're probably going to have more than 254 addresses be used up. Always think of it this way. It's not going to be 254 people on at the same time. It also depends on how long your DHCP requests are. So if you have a lot of people coming in, uh, let's say you have 200 people that show up in the morning, and then you have another 150 that show up in, in the evening. If that DHCP lease is set for one day, you're going to run out of IP addresses. So let's change this to something that's a little bit larger. I don't want to get overly large because if we have you know 60,000 addresses to be used, then that could uh, become complicated with broadcasts and everything else. So. I'm going to do 172.20.255.254 is going to be my gateway IP. And then I'm going to do a slash 20 on this network. So it's a private class B network. And then we have a usable network count of about 4,100-ish. And the network range of this is looks pretty healthy. I'm just going to do guest.local for my actual... Uh, domain name, my local domain name as well. I'm going to update this DHCP range. So it's going to assign an address of anything. Let's do uh, dot 20 through 255.250 just to kind of give it a little bit of breathing room. But I have plenty of usable addresses in this space since it's going to be 240.20 all the way up to 255.250. So that should give us plenty of information there. 
Now last time we configured the DHCP Unify controller. We're not going to be deploying any Unify devices within the guest network itself. Those will stay on our actual office network for more of our administrative tasks. So we do not need to put the Unify controller in here. So press save on this. Now we have our network created. Now let's create our wireless network so that people can join. So if I go to wireless networks, I'm just gonna create a new wireless network here and let's just call this office. And let's put a WPA password here and press save. So I have office, so if anybody joins this and they have the password that I just created, it will give them access to the unthrottled and private network. Now for the guest network, let's go in and give this a name as well. So the SSID, I'm just gonna call this guest for now. And this is, we're gonna leave this open for the time being. I'm gonna kind of explain some things uh, of some different options. And the most important thing is this guest policy. This guest policy prevents anyone connected on this SSID to be able to communicate to other clients as well as access other wired devices as well. So this is very important that we enable this. Now in order to have our guests join the correct virtual network that we just created, click under advanced options and hit use VLAN and here's where we pick our VLAN number. So since we did VLAN 20 when we created the network, we're going to say anybody who joins this SSID joins the VLAN 20 as well. And this is where we're going to get our isolation on our network traffic. Awesome, so now we have our networks created and we have the separation between the SSIDs. So now what we need to do is go to guest control and enable the guest portal. So with this guest portal, we have a ton of different options on how we can configure this. First thing that you see here is authentication. You can do no authentication, simple password, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, the most common will be either no authentication or simple password. I'm not really a huge fan of simple password. If you are going to use this option, we can see down here. So if I do no authentication, it, the way we have a, our SSID set up, it's an open network, people join, and they would come to this page here and it would just say guest access and then they press connect and that's it. So anybody would be able to join your network. Now, if you want to limit it to your guests, that's fine. Obviously a password, you know, you don't want like neighbors of other businesses or anything like that. If you're in a coffee shop, maybe, maybe you write it on the menu or something like that. You can use the password, but I wouldn't use this option. A few things. A, when they join, it's going to be an open network. And then you have this guest access password down here. So if you're going to go with a password, you might as well go back to wireless networks and put in an actual WPA password so at least it's encrypted. If you leave the, the network open the way that I have it now and do a simple password, it will not encrypt anything between the device and the access point. So for this example, I'm just going to move forward with no authentication and leave it as an open network, assuming that we're going to have lots of short-term incoming people, and if we need to add a password on this, we can always add this later. Another thing I want to mention here is that there's this use secure portal and redirecting. So the first thing is, if you enable use secure portal, you have to have a valid certificate that's trusted by these global clients. Uh, this is a little advanced, it is possible to do, you just have to maintain setting up an actual trusted SSL certificate that you either create yourself through Let's Encrypt or purchase through a third party like Namecheap or something. But I'm not going to enable this because if they're going to this page, it, I don't really see too much security being required other than they're clicking connect. And once they click connect, they're authenticated and then they can move back to HTTPS. 
this redirecting host name, you can also do that as well if you have like an external website. Uh, same with this like landing page up here. But when if they're going, let's say that they're going to HTTPS google.com and you have this on, it's basically going to throw an error to them right away because your controller, your access point is going to redirect everything to your controller first. And that's where it's going to say, wait, your controller is not google.com. So just an FYI on that. I'm going to leave this on because I want to make sure that at least they get some sort of error if they have a problem, uh, but it will throw a security thing because obviously my cloud controller is not google.com. So I'm going to leave that on for now. Now this is the really cool part. Ubiquity made this absolutely beautiful and amazing on how to customize the design and, and make a really good onboarding experience. So you can add the welcome text in here. Let's just put welcome to our Wi-Fi. And you can even move, kind of customize things and move things around, which is pretty cool. You can even do a terms of service, which they kind of give you a default. We'll just use the default. And you can even change out the logos and colors and everything. So if I do a logo here, and I do a background. I can kind of customize it with my brand, which makes it look really pretty. And we can even change the button colors here, which the server side up green is that right there. And you can even switch between the two and see exactly how the layout's going to be. So I'm cool with that. That, that looks awesome. So I'm just going to press apply changes here. And of course my logo didn't load, so let's try this one more time. Logo, apply changes, there we go. So let's dive into actually testing this network out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join the workstation that I'm on right now. I'm going to join that to my private network. So my network settings on my Mac, I'm just going to open this up and join the office network. It's a pretty self-explanatory process. It's just like joining any other wireless network. We're just going to punch in our key and it's going to join and you can see that I have an IP address. Press apply here and I can get to google.com. So that's great. Now let's see what it looks like on the other side if a guest were to join this. Okay so I'm going to show you what this looks like in a completely separate machine here. First thing I'm going to do is open up a terminal. Let's just try to ping Google's DNS. And obviously I don't have a connection because my wireless is disconnected. So if I go to guest here and try to connect to our network, okay, so I can see this beautiful onboarding, still no internet. And here I can go in, I can see the terms of use, I can go press accept, and as soon as I press connect, I get a success message. And look at that, I should have internet access. If I load this up, close out of this and go to Google, voila, we have internet access. So on a desktop slash laptop, this looks really beautiful. So let's see what this looks like on a mobile phone as well. All right, so on my iPhone, I'm just gonna open up settings. I'm going to join the guest network, tap on it. And then we should get a portal that pops up, there we go. You can see the controller IP address is up at the top and it does a nice responsive design so the logo and text and buttons fit on the screen quite well. I just have to press I accept and click connect. And this is the only thing I really don't like about this is down here at the bottom uh, you have to like pinch and zoom to read success but kind of doesn't give the user that great of an experience but they have to press done and then now if I go to Safari and try to load up Google, I've confirmed I have internet on this device. So let's see what this looks like from the controller's perspective on what devices are joined to our network. All right, so back on the controller, we can go down to clients and we can see a list of all the clients that are connected to our networks. You can look at my workstation here. This is on the private network or on the office network, I should say. And we have the guest laptop that's joined in the iPhone. These are the client IP addresses. So I'm on the workstation right now. 
what I can do is ping 172.20.240.27 and I am not getting a response. So that's good. I do not have a connection to that device and we should not have a connection to the other device as well. Now I'm going to jump onto the guest laptop and we'll see if we can have any communication between the phone. Okay, so now I'm on the guest laptop connected to the guest network, which you can see right here. And I'm going to test the connection from the guest laptop to the workstation. So if I do ping 192.168.57.52, which is the IP address of that workstation, you can see I'm not getting any response, which is good. That's from one network to the other. Now, the other thing that we want to protect is guest A not being able to access guest B. And so that's where we do ping 172.20.240.28 and that is the IP address for that device. We can see that it's not responding but if I change this to a 27 you, that's the device that I'm on right now I am getting a response. So that's great. Now we're not done yet. The other problem that we have is if we switch over to our speed test here you can see that this is a 100 by 10 connection and you can see that our guests have full access to our network. So we're going to want to change this as well and I'll show you how to do that. So jumping back to our controller, the one thing that we'll need to do is go into settings. And we're going to go into user groups. And what we're going to do is just group all of our guests into one group and we're just going to call it guest. And this is where we can limit the download bandwidth. So I'm just going to set this to 3000 by 768. So our upload should be dramatically reduced. Pick whatever numbers you'd like. The connection that I'm installing this at is 200 by 15. So I'm thinking that 3000 or 3 meg down should be plenty enough for them to view a YouTube video, but not drain everything of streaming 4K or something like that that will affect our mission critical devices. So I have my guest created, my guest group, but I have to go back into the wireless network itself, press edit, and then come down to user group, and we need to change this to guest. So this is going to say that any device that joins our guest wireless will be applied to the guest group, which then gets this throttle uh, rule in place. The best thing too about putting it in these groups is that it will take effect immediately and does not require the client to reconnect. It will go in effect as soon as we press that save button. So let's jump to our guest laptop and see what this looks like. All right, so now we're back on our guest laptop. Let's just run another speed test. We can see the last one was 107 by 11 and this one should be much slower. Fantastic, and just like that, we have our guest network set up to be throttled down to make sure that we're preserving our internet resources to our private network where that matters most. So moving forward, this is not the last video in this series. If you're interested in following along, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. If you like this video, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up. Any questions on anything, feel free to hit us up on Twitter at ServerSideUp. You can follow me personally at JD Rogers, or as always, just leave a comment in that comment box below. So looking forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.